Welcome to my talk. Thank you for coming. I know it's been very hard to choose There are some nice talks at the same time, so I really appreciate that you guys are here. I hope you're going to have a good time. Um, I'm going to talk about animated vector drawables. My name is Marcos, if you don't know me. Uh, I work at Mirago in Montreal. It's a very nice company. We do application for other for the companies uh, in Canada. And we've been doing a lot of great stuff, and we are hiring. So if you're <laughs> thinking about moving to Canada, you, you, you know the website. It's there. <laughs> So I'm going to talk a little bit about vector drawables at the beginning, because I want to make sure that we're on the same page. Uh, there are some things that you need to know and understand before we get to animated vector drawables. So at the beginning, at the beginning of everything in Android, we had the shape drawables. We still have them. They're still nice. We like them a lot. And they're very easy to use. But the nice thing about it is that it scales very well, and you can do some nice stuff, but it is very limited, right? You can do rectangles, you can do triangles, and that's it. And then we have the state drawables and transition drawables we use every day. I hope you use it, and they're super nice. Nowadays, we do have something better, and... Um, there is vector drawable. It was introduced in, in with Lollipop, and it's similar to SVG. Actually, it's based on SVG, but a bit more limited because SVG is a very, very complex. There are very, very complex protocols and, and patterns. So Google said we don't need everything that SVG supports. We just need some stuff for icons and all those stuff. So we're gonna do the the, the, the basic that we can do for vector drawables. And they also scale very well, and they can be more complex. So this is what a vector drawable looks like. We can have the vector with its uh, height and, and width. And uh, we have the group, and we can have path. And that's where the magic happens in the path. And we're going to understand very well how it works, so we can be able to make animations uh, very soon. So. Before we get to vector drawables, though, I want to do a, uh, a little bit of a talk about SVG and what is it for and how does it work. So it's XML uh, language used to draw graphics. It supports gradient, rotations, filter effects, animation, and so on. And that's, uh, that's an example of a very, 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 very simple SVG. So if we pay attention to the path on this SVG, we can see that it actually draws uh, a square. So how does a SVG draws? There are five line commands. There are the basic ones. And each command uh, draws a straight line between two points. And how it works is basically there is a, some kind of invisible cursor that goes through x, x, and y uh, locations to draw lines and circles and all those stuff. So the five commands that I'm talking about are those ones. They're the move to, horizontal line, close path, line to, a vertical line. We're going to go through each one of them very, very fast so we can see better how it works. So the move to. The move to is actually a command that tells the, 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 the drawable, the SVG, uh, what to start drawing. So if we take an X and Y uh, graph, we can, we can tell him, oh, you can start on this position on X and then go into this one on Y. And that's where everything is going to start. That's why it's at the beginning. So once I say that my, my, my cursor is at 10, 10, position X, 10, and Y, 10, I can then start to draw stuff. For example, the age. I can use the age uh, property command to tell him, look, draw me a horizontal line until, 90, until the position 90 on that graph. And then I can use V, which is for vertical line, to draw a vertical line until 90 in this case. I also can use line, and line is a little bit more uh, straightforward. I can say many lines, one after the other. So in this example, I'm going to say, go back to position 10 on X, 
and then go to position uh, Y on 10. And it will draw the line like it should. So basically, this is what the path is telling the, the system to do, so it can be drawn. We can simplify that a little bit and remove the second command for the line if we use another horizontal and we use the Z. So the Z basically says, you know, get the last position where you were and go back to the beginning and close my, my drawable, close my SVG. So this is the path we saw at the beginning, that's what it draws. There are some other properties like fill. I can use it to say the color that I want inside. And I can also use stroke to, see another, to set up another color. If we compare an SVG to a vector drawable, we're gonna have this. It's pretty similar. We're gonna have the same tag path, and we're gonna have stroke, uh, fill color, path data, and some other stuff. The important properties for the talk today that I'm going to be talking about animated uh, vector drawables are those ones. So we have all those properties, and most of them we can play with them to do some animations using the, the, the vector drawable. And I'm gonna focus my talk today on four of them, and those are the ones. Path data, trim path offset, trim path start, and trim path end. So I'm gonna go through an example that shows how we can do animation for with trim path offset and trim path start and trim path end. And then we're gonna see another example where we can see how we can do animations for path data. So animated vector drawables. The coolest thing about animated vector drawables is that we can play with the very little detail of an image. Like those animations that are on the screen right now, they all can be done easily with vector draw, but just by telling them where to go, how to rotate, and how to move. So it allows us to apply animations for some properties of vector draw, like I said before, and animating all properties are natively available on Lollipop, and Plus, and more, and available for KitKat, and before via Vector Drawable Compact. The only thing that is not available in the vector uh, drawable compact is the path data animations that is only lollipop and, and more, but it's still worth to take a look at. Since lollipop is taking everything as minimal, almost soon, we hope. <laughs> so the properties we will cover, like I said before, are those ones, and let's start with this, uh, this example. So this is the animation that we're gonna go through and to be able to, to do, and how can we go and have this effect on our app. So basically, we start drawing at the beginning, and the line goes, and it finish the drawing, and then it goes away. Like, like if it's a pencil that is drawing on the screen. And everything is done just by vector drivers, and uses the trim path start, trim path offset, and trim path end. So the, where is the trim path start? The trim path start property is the fraction of the path to trim from the start. So it's basically how, where it's going to begin to be drawn. The path end, it's where should I go? Until when should I go on my draw, on my drawing, uh, and uh, so I can draw my stuff. And it can run from zero to one. And the trim path offset, and that's a little bit tricky one, it's basically where I tell my, my, my vector drawable where it should start drawing. So it's basically, by default, it, it has a position, but let's say because I want to synchronize with other animations, I can tell him instead of starting the circle, for example, instead of starting from, from here, I can tell him, I want you to start from here. So I, wanted to, I want you to start from the half of the circle, and then you finish where you started. It's gonna be clear in the example very soon. So I want to do a live demonstration, and I hope it's gonna work. It never works, but <laughs> we'll try. 
So basically, basically what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go on the very simple, like a developer that doesn't understand anything about design. I'm gonna go on the mature design website. I'm gonna get an icon, and we're gonna put it in Sketch, and we're gonna see how 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 it's drawn and how it works. Oops, you guys are not seeing. So this is just for showing that anyone can do it. You can do it at home, and you can do it to yourself. So let's get this one, because this one is the one that I prepared for. So I download the SVG, and it magically, appear, it magically appears on my sketch because I don't have everything ready. No, no, no. It's all live. So this is my so this is my vector. If we open here, we can see it has made a lot of parts. And for the animation that we want to achieve, we have a problem with this one. So this, this uh, icon is made by shapes. So I have this one here, which if I remove, you're going to see that it disappears in white. And and I have the other ones too. And, and that doesn't work really well for the animation that we want to do because we actually want the path to be drawn. And if we're using shapes, what it's going to do when I say, oh, draw from zero to one, it's going to do the whole shape completely. It's not going to do the stroke that we want. So for that, you can simply come here and you can get the things that already exist. For example, we're going to remove everything from the shape. And we're going to delete the things that we don't need. For example, I don't need this big one. And I don't need this one. So with this, I can, instead of using fill, I can use stroke. And then I'm going to have my vector the way it should be for the animation that I want to achieve. So I'm going to add a border. It's going to be black. And then I can do the same thing for this one. And then I can tweak and until I have something that it looks like what I had before. And if I'm looking for something that it's the same thing that it was before, you ask yourself why I just didn't use the first one. Because like I said, the first one that we downloaded from Google website was made by shapes, and we needed something made by strokes, so we could do an animation the way we were seeing like it was being drawn by the strokes. So after some work and after some tweaking here and there, you're going to have something like this. And if you pay attention to the animation that we saw before, you can see the you can see that the line starts and it has a connection. So in the middle, it passes through the, the head and it goes to the body and it has a connection there. That one, that thing, you have to draw it yourself. So I already did, it, and it's very easy. You just have, a, you just have to create a line and, and put the connection the way you want. And then, and, and again, you can, you can say whatever you want. You can do whatever you want, the connection that you want the way you want. So once you have this, you can get it and just export as a, as a SVG. And 
and then you can go usually personally I like to go to the website uh, SVG to vector drawer I just find it easier and uh, I don't know I just see everything that is there and I copy paste but you can also import from Android Studio. So you can go there, you can open your SVG, and you can import directly to Android Studio. It's going to convert to Vector Drawable. So once we have our fine SVG, we can just drop it here in the website. And what it's going to give us is this. This is the, the, the vector draw we're going to have. So if you see it here, uh, we already have some properties set. So at the beginning of the beginning of everything, uh, I don't want anything to show. I want it to begin slowly. So that's why my path ends at zero. Uh, in presentation mode, we can't see. So if I move, if I change my, my I should have mirrored my, my screen. So if I change my, where's the preview? Here. If I change my path end to one, for example, we will be able to see the circle. If I change my path end to 0 0.5, we're gonna have, we're gonna see half of the circle, and if I do 0 0.3, we can see uh, just a part of it, and then we can play also with the offset. So what I was saying before is that there, with the offset, you can choose where it's gonna start drawing. So and how uh, how much is gonna take. So mine is 0 0.5, so it's actually starting on the half of it. And then it's going to go through to the end and then come back. So if I change, for example, my, from 0, 0 0.5 to 0 0.2, it changes completely my shape, but keeping the same amount of drawing because of my, my path end. I can put 0, 0.1, I can put 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and everything. For this one, I want 0 0.5 because I want it to start really from the bottom because by default it starts from the top on the way it was drawn and in my case I want it to be 0 0.5 but in another vector draw but it can be something else. So like we saw before, this is the vector file. We can set stroke color, stroke width, and add the other properties that we talked uh, before. And to have our animation, our animated vector draw, we need three components. We need a vector, an, animate, an animated vector, and our object animator. <laughs> so basically, the vector is your image. Uh, the animated vector is where it's going to connect your animation to your vector. So it's what's going to say, on this part, on my vector, I want it to do this. And this other part, I want it to do that. You're going to see that a lot. So let's start from the beginning. So let's see the head first. So I have my path data to do my head. I have this stroke colors, which is wide. And I, I set my width. And, and everything. My trim path and at the beginning is zero because I don't want it to show anything. I like, like we saw, I wanted to start from the middle. So it's 0 0.5, the okay. offset. So this is very important because this is where it's gonna tell where it's gonna start and, and then you have to do all your animation based on that. The next one, it's the body. And same thing, again, because we changed 
our vector to 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 work with strokes uh, so we can have the animation we wanted everything is based on strokes when you put on the vector drawable same thing we don't want anything to be shown at the beginning so trim path end is zero and the trip path start by default it's zero two so zero to zero doesn't draw anything And we cannot forget that we have a connection in the middle when we see the animation, right? That's what is going to make the line goes down and then finish the animation. So we call it line, which is the connection, the part, uh, the third part of the equation. And again, color, I don't want it to be shown at the beginning, so trim path end is zero and all those stuff. Um, so let's get to the animations. So the second component you want to have is the animation, and that's very, very, very important. So here you're gonna say which property, which property you want to animate on your vector. So in the case, I want my vector to be drawn, so I want to animate my path end, because that's why I'm gonna make it go all the way like this. So I want my path end from zero, go from zero to one, because I want it to be drawn completely. And I want to use an interpolator, and that's very, very important. Because like a car, uh, things don't start moving at 60 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour. Uh, it goes from zero to 60, right? So the same thing with your animations. You cannot expect your animation to start uh, moving very, very fast. You have to use an interpolator, and that makes a lot of difference. Like if I show you an example, if you use the interpolator, the animation is like this. If you use no interpolator, the animation looks like this. It doesn't look smooth, it doesn't look like something nice, and, and that's not really what you want. But the tricky part is that when you use an interpolator, you have an acceleration and deceleration, so you have to synchronize all the paths that you want to move and to animate to make sure that they're gonna work at the same time and synchronized. And we're going to see how to do that. So now we're going to show the connection. So I already said to my animation, look, show my head. And now it's time to show my, my, my connection. But I cannot show the connection at the beginning. I have to wait for my, for my circle to get to the end. So then I can show my connection. So then I can show my body. So what, what tells my animation to wait is the offset. And then you're going to have to try it yourself. You're going to have to see, uh, depending on the, on the interpolator that you're using, how much time it's going to take to accelerate and decelerate, so you can know when is the right offset to put for the next animation. In this case, my connection animation is linear. It's interpolator, so I want the, the velocity to always be the same since the beginning, because I already had the acceleration on the first part of my, of my head. So right now I can have it on the same velocity uh, and it keeps like straight. Also, if you pay attention to the, to, to the animation, you see that the connection is not there at the, at the end. Why? Because I say to get to, to, to move over, to, to not be there because it doesn't, it's not part of the icon. So after, I have to say to, look, you have to disappear. And now because I want it to disappear and I want it to draw like it's disappearing, I'm gonna move the start offset, not the end offset. And that's gonna be a decelerate because it's gonna be at the end of my animation. And at the end, we're gonna have to show the body. Again, I'm using a start offset to synchronize to make sure that it's gonna start at the same time. And I'm gonna go from, zero, from value zero to one. So at the end of it all, you have your animations for each part of your icon, and then you have your icon on the vector drawable. So now you have to connect them. You have to say that that animation is for that part of, the, of your icon. The other animation is for that part of the icon. So you do that in the animated vector drawable file. You can say, you can set up targets and you can say for this vector drawable, which is icon player, uh, I'm gonna have a body, a head and a line that it's set on the vector drawable. And for the body, I want the reveal body animation that we did 
with the right offset and the right interpolator. For the same thing for the head and then the same thing for the line. And this is the code that makes the animation alive. You just have to get your animated vector drawable. If you're using it for Lollipop and before, you're going to have to use animated vector drawable compat. And then on the click listener, on this project that I use, there's going to be on GitHub, you can check it out later. Uh, uh, I call it on a click, and the, the, the animation starts. So that's for, that's it for this animation. It, it was, it looks complicated, but it's pretty simple. All we played with was with trim path and trim path start and offset and path data. I didn't have to draw anything different. I didn't have to, to take a look on the path data and, and see how it works and, and, and details or anything like that. So only with those properties you can do something nice and different for your app and, and delight your user and get his attention. So the next one, that's where things get a little bit more complicated, is the path data. So in the path data, uh, everything is a little bit more complicated because you're going to be playing with the commands. So the commands that we saw at the beginning that says how a vector drawable is drawn and how it works, that's what we're going to use to animate. For example, a play button, there is going to become a stop button. Again, the same concept, the same recipe. We're going to have a vector. It's my, my play and my stop. We're going to have an animated vector, which is going to connect my vector, my vector parts, to my object animator. So I have my vectors. Uh, I have my vectors icon play and icon stop because now I have two states, and I have my animated vector drawable to play to stop and stop to play. That makes uh, connections between one and the other. What what's tricky though, is the animator. That's where, that's where things get tricky, because you're going to start playing with the path data. And if you don't understand very well the concepts that I was talking about at the beginning, about the move, about the lines, and about uh, the, the, the close path and everything, you may have very big problems to do the animation really the way you want. So I have that path dot data for, for my play, and then I have the path data for my stop. And what I want is, I want to tell Android and the animator vector drawable, look, get this path and go to this path. So it basically gets the, each command of the path and it just make it go to the one that it's on the other, in, to the other end and automatically things get animated on the way. But if things are not set up very properly, the animation can be, at the end, it's gonna work your, for, your, your form, your path animation, but it's going to be super weird because things are going to be going everywhere. So this is our challenge. We're going to have to go from this path to the other path. So if I go to my Android Studio and I just say, look, I have an object animator and I want you to animate from this path to that path, the way it is here, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. Why? Because there's something missing. If you see a triangle, which is the play button, only has three commands, only has three drawings, while the path that of, a, of a, a stop button has four because it's square. So it has four commands to finish it all. So it's missing a command right in the middle. And the, and the animator vector drawer, he is not going to know what to do with it. And it, can, it just can't create a command out of nowhere, and things is, is just not going to work. So what you can do? You can put whatever you want there. You can create a new command just for you. So it really depends on how you want to animate. So what I'm doing here, if you pay attention to the, to the, to the animation, is I'm getting, I'm getting the, the corner of the play, and I'm making it expand to my stop button. To my, to my square. And all I have to do to have this, uh, to achieve this goal, I just have to copy the command that I have for that place. So I'm going to have two times the same command, but because it's going to the same place, we're going to see it as one. So that's all I do. I get the line that goes to the, to the <coughs> corner of the triangle, and I duplicate it where the point is going to, where it's going to draw my, my, my square. So at the end, once I have my path data from the beginning 
that matches the path data of the end, I can do my animation. So I can do my object animator, and I can easily say, look, it's going to last 30, 300 milliseconds. I want you to use accelerate and decelerate. And I want the values from these commands to go to those commands. And because I have the same amount of command, uh, Android is just going to make it go from one value to the other, and the animation is going to happen. All I have to do is say that my animation type is a value, it's a path type, and everything is going to work. You may, you, you may be asking yourself, it's too much stuff, right? Yeah, I have to do animated vector, drawable, and then I have to do a vector, and then I have to do an animator, and it's just like too much files, it's too much complicated. But actually, on Google I.O. this year, Android, uh, the, the Google announced uh, something called XML bundle format, and that allows you to put the three commands, the three uh, components of your animation on the same file. So you can have your animated vector drawable, you can have your animator, and you can have your vector drawable in the same file, you just, and you can make the connection in the same place so you don't have everything all over. It's available since Build Tools uh, 24, and it lets you merge the three files in, the, in one only namespace, uh, you, only using the AAPT namespace. And starting on uh, Marshmallow, there is something that makes things even easier if you want to do a state uh, list animation. If, for example, you want, when you click on a button, you want the play to become a stop, you can just say on an animated state list drawable, uh, I'm going to set up uh, a state for checked and a state for not checked. And I'm going to say from this state to this state, I want you to do this animation. So it's basically what I'm doing is here on this animated selector. I'm saying that the transition from, from uh, ID uh, stopped and ID playing, I want you to use this transition. Unfortunately, it's only available for Marshmallow and more. And, and it's very unfortunate because if you try to do yourself state list uh, drawables, uh, with animated vector drawables, you're going to see that you're going to end up with two animated vector drawables, and you're going to have to save the state, and you're going to have to call the right animation at the right time, and that can be a little of a pain, and it can cause some problems if you don't pay attention. So animated vector drawables allow us to delight our users, and better than that, it allows the user to pay attention to what's important. So animation always catches the eyes of the user. So if you want, if you have a new app and you want them to pay attention to something and to make sure they're going to use some feature, that's something that you can use to grab their attention and to make them like it, uh, your application. And they look complicated and they look hard, but they aren't really, really, really. You just have to try it yourself. They are awesome. Uh, that's it, a short sweep. Uh, I hope uh, you guys learned something today, and if you have any questions, I'm up for it. Yes? I know there are some tools, but I do everything in hand. It's, it's a little of a pain, but the end result is really, really nice. Yes? Um, so you have <coughs> Sorry? OK, uh, so if you're looking for the GitHub, the code is going to be available uh, tomorrow. So you're going to be able to see the animations that I showed you today. So my GitHub, I forgot to put on the slides, but it's Marcos Paulist, just like my Twitter. <laughs>